I am Natalie Hofer. I am 16, going into my junior year at Agnes Irwin. I really enjoy the um, sciences and math, and I'm a big swimmer, so I'd like to pursue some of those things in college. I was at a team called Westtown Aquatics Club, and this team was connected to a school which wouldn't allow outsiders to come in. I was very hopeful that the team would reopen, but unfortunately it didn't. And there was a lack of swim teams in PA, so we had to travel all the way to Delaware to look for a team. I eventually found one that had just started opening and accepting new swimmers but the pool was outside. So I was swimming outside all the way until January, which was really tough, but I made a bunch of friends and it was, they helped me get through it. But after January, I had to move to Omli, which is the upper mainline Y, and that's where I am now. Because I go to an all girls private school, it is, pretty tiny and we were able to open back up before most of the other public schools around the area which we were allowing students to come in at um, October, November. But unlike most of the girls who I go to school with, I chose to be virtual because my club team was so far away from school since Wilmington, Delaware and Villanova, PA are around an hour away. I wasn't able to make swim practice in school work because of the timing standpoint. So I chose to say virtual because my house is right in the middle of the two. So I was able to make it from virtual classes to swim practice if I stayed home. And I stayed virtual until January when my high school varsity team, swim team, um, opened. So I went to varsity practice this is at school instead of my Delaware practices since it was a lot more convenient. And that was one of the reasons why I switched teams to Umley because Umley is a very close team to my school. So I was able to make my club team at Umley and my high school varsity team at school. And it was all able to work. So now I'm at Umley, which is very close to my school. For my school, we had the same schedule each day but the classes would interchange. So we'd have a class in the morning, a little break for assembly or clubs, and then two classes after lunch and two classes at the end of the day. So it was basically the same routine each day, except for there were a lot more restrictions than last year, obviously. So we had to be separated by grade, which meant that I was only with other 10th graders in one section of the building and we couldn't go anywhere else in the building. We had to wear masks and like we lost a bunch of things like our library, the cafeteria and the gym. Um, for lunch, we had to stay inside if it was really cold, which meant we had to be silent since we would have our masks off and have um, block blockers which is like a plastic sheet in front of us or if we really wanted to go outside we could sit outside but we had to be six feet apart which is really hard because we lost connections with other grades and i had a bunch of friends who were in my classes who were from a different grade than me but they would have to zoom in and so i wouldn't get to actually talk to them or be around them which was really hard because I like the girls from the other grades too, so it was a little tough, but we made it work. For school sports, it was pretty much the same from other years, other than we had to wear masks and all the athletes had to get COVID tested each week, which was a little a little weird and new thing we had to deal with, but it was pretty much the same. We weren't separated during sports, which was nice. But um, for swimming, it's obviously different because you can't wear a mask underwater. So we had to bring bags, in, like little plastic bags to put our masks in all the way up until we got into the pool. We had to wear our masks and put them in the bags. 
So that was a little weird. Um, we also used to practice with the boys um, Haverford School and do meets with them as well. But this year we weren't allowed to come in contact with them. So that was a big change for us. And for meets, usually we would go against all the other teams, but we were paired up with one school, which was the Baldwin School. And that was weird too, because you were racing people who you didn't see since our times would be um, matched up online. So I didn't know how fast everybody else was going because I wasn't swimming against them. So that was a big change for me. And uh, my favorite meet of the high school, my favorite high school meet got canceled this year, which was Easterns and that's held at f &M College. And that is my most favorite meet and it got canceled. And that's my goal meet. So each year I've been, I've been getting higher and higher on the leaderboard. So I made the C final as a seventh grader. I made the B final as an eighth grader and I've been going up and up and up. But last year was my opportunity. I was really excited to make the A final, but since it got canceled, I, we had our Eastern meet, which was where our times got matched up, but it wasn't the same as it was in past years. And I came in seventh place. So I'm really hopeful that it will reopen and we'll get to go next year and maybe I'll be even higher up. My summer was very busy this year because I got my first real job as a camp counselor, which was very exciting for me, but I would like to keep swimming on top of that. So it was one of the most busy schedules I had to endure, especially during summer. I would wake up at 4.50 in the morning for six o'clock swim practice till eight. And because my swim practice was so far away from work, I had to schedule in a lot of commute time, which meant it was around 30 to 45 minutes just driving around. So my, I would get to camp at 8.45 and do a camp day with around 22 kids each week for six weeks. And it was myself and one or two other counselors. So we would go from 8.45 to three usually, and sometimes kids would stay after. So I'd go till five o'clock sometimes if some kids were signed up for aftercare. But on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I would have summer swim league meets, which went from around 4.30 to eight o'clock at night. So I wasn't getting home until nine sometimes. So I'd be out of the house at five and then get there at um, nine, which was a long day for me, but it was, it had some fun parts and it had some parts where I had to really work, but you know, I just kept going. And on meet, um, weekends too, I would have other swim meets and they would be pretty far for swim meets. Like I'd have to travel to Virginia. I had to travel to North Carolina and they were all really important meets. So my week was just filled with camp swim. Sometimes it was really hard to balance everything together, whether it was like school and work or swimming and you always have to have time for rest and fun. So um, I would always try to fit everything in, especially in one day or one night. I had a big swim meet at Carlisle and I got my best time, but I was so focused on having to do swimming that I was getting ready to also go to family fun night that night, which is a very important event for me because it's with our friends and it's for our summer swim league and it happens only once a year. So I go from having a best time to getting in the car for two and a half hours to race to the end of family fun night. And um, some of my good friends stayed to make sure that I would get some family fun night time in. So you always have to make sure that you're working hard to have that time for fun. And I was so glad that I was able to do both. And it's always just about time management and what you can do and just going for it. <laughs> We put our mask business on hold just because we were going into school and we all go to different schools. So we'd rather grow as students and focus on that since 
um, Corona was declining when we put it on hold, but I still tried to volunteer at my swim club. I would help them get ready for meets and I'd help them line up, which was really exciting because I got to be where I love and I got to help kids that I knew and it was very fun for me. Um, I also was selected for a diversity swim league conference, which was held online for three hours. Um, we worked together through um, trying to recognize, solve, and how we could get involved in problems and um, just things that are in the swim community world. And that was really exciting because it was some of the top swimmers in the country my age. And I got to meet kids from Nevada and California, which is a very, very far from Pennsylvania. So that was cool. And um, it was a really eye-opening experience for me because I was seeing and recognizing all these things going on in the swim community that I might not have been as much involved in before the conference. So I learned a lot from that, which was very cool and fun. And a Olympian came in and talked to us about it. And that was very cool for me because I'd never really talked to an Olympian before. <laughs> This summer, I got to, uh, I was at my summer swim league at Concord Country Club, and I had been focusing on this goal since last year when um, Corona was prevalent and we couldn't really have as many swim meets or summer league things in our, um, in our everyday life. And so this year I was really focusing on the goal of breaking the 1997 um, 50 breaststroke uh, record, league record. And I did at my uh, second to last meet, which was very exciting because I had been working towards it all summer and I finally got it. And I was just so happy because after this meet I was able to more focus on the fun than getting this record. Obviously, I was still trying to keep breaking my record, and um, but I got it, so I was super happy. It was for 15 uh, years and older kids, and so that means I can keep working towards it next year to keep breaking my own record, which I'm going to, I hope, and I get to keep trying and trying and trying.